Hello and welcome to the final episode in this first chapter. This chapter we've been working on our characters and getting them to move around, aim, shoot and reload. We now want to deal damage to other players in our games too. So in this episode we're going to go through the damage system and how it works and get it so we can see the damage being done on the players via health bars. So let's get started. So to get started with damage, first of all we have to understand that damage can only be done by the server. You'll notice this if you ever call the damage nodes, the little server icon up here. That indicates that only the server can call this and only the server can react to it. So this is being called already on our server function that we made previously when we told it to start shooting. So that is okay. Just make sure that your base damage has got a value. I've put in 100. And also that your fire range has also got a value in it. I've put 5,000. Make sure you've got those in there too. Okay, so to receive damage, we're going to go to the first person character and we're going to right click and do point damage. You'll see event point damage. And in there, you'll get output for how much damage we take. So let's just print string this so you can see the damage number come out. And as you can see, that little server icon again. Okay, not only the server version will do this. So here I am playing a server. Shoot, shoot, shoot. We can see it's shooting out and saying 100. And if I go to the other character, I can shoot, shoot, shoot. But it still says server 100 because it's the server one doing the code. So with that, we need to transfer over the amount of health that has been damaged by the player character. So this has been on the server here. If we were to take our health value and change it, it would actually, we can make it replicate to everyone else. So on here, we're going to put in health as a variable. And that's going to be a... I'm going to start off with, uh, let's say, 1000 health. And we're going to also have a max health value of 1000 as well. Okay. And then on point damage, we're going to take out the health value, which is the current health. And we're going to do subtract another float, which is the damage, set it back to health here. Now at the moment, this is server only, so it's only going to affect the server's health. When in fact, what I want to do is affect everyone, uh, everyone's health, or specifically the player one. So the way we're going to do that is replicate this value. So I'm going to right, uh, go to click on the health value here, go to the right hand side, go to replication, and change that to replicated. Now we've got the replicated icons appear on these health bars. So now, that value is changing on all of them. So if the player character shoots someone else, or they get shot by someone else rather, they all get their value changed on their side too. Now we still need to display that number because we can't see it. It's just it's just changing it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set update the health of the player based on this too. Now being as again an, a damage only event here, we need to tell this thing to update its owning client's version. So we're going to drag out from here and uh, we're not drag out from this way. Right click, do custom event and do update health. And this is going to be replicated onto the owning client. So whoever owns this player character is going to call this event here. We're going to put that onto the end of this damage event. But to update health. You're then going to tell the UI to go ahead and update all its settings that it needs to do for health. So here we go and do our health UI. So we go to my UI folder that we made in the last episode. And create a new interface, widget blueprint. And we'll call this one uh, health. Oh. And very simple one. We'll get rid of the canvas panel. And we're just going to put in a progress bar. And there. Yeah. And you, the way this works is that the percentage value, which is here, will increase and decrease the bar. Okay, pretty simple. Let's leave that at one. And so this is normalized, so it goes to zero, zero to one. I remember our health is going from zero to a thousand, so we do need to normalize that value. So let's go to our graph here and go onto the construct. I'm gonna get the player character, again, which is the local one. And from there, we're going to do cast to first person character. Get that reference. Remember, this may not always work because the 
character may not yet exist. So don't worry, we're going to go, we know how to fix that from last time, so we'll go ahead and fix that in a minute. But anyway, let's carry on. We get the reference here. We play a character and promote that to a variable. Okay. And that's that. And then on cast failed, we're going to tell this thing to try this again. So we're going to do custom event. Fetch. Reference. And we're going to plug that into the cast there. Then on cast failed here, we're going to drag down do set timer by event. By event. And create event goes in here. And we're going to choose this fetch reference from the drop down. We'll do whatever one second. We don't have to tick looping because it's going to go through it and keep doing it until it's been made. Through. That's okay. Uh, we then need to bound, bind the uh, player's health and damage to this bar. So we're going to go to the uh, character again, create an event dispatcher, and go on damaged. And we're going to drag this out and do call plug that in update health. We're then going to go to our uh, health bar again and on the after we've done the set as first on the character get the reference we drag them there and do bind event to undamaged drag out from there do a custom event or create event whatever you want to do um do custom to update bar and all we're going to do in here is take out a reference for our first person character Get the health and max health values. So get health, get max health. And you drag from health here to do a normalized to range value and plug that into range max. And that's going to look at these numbers and work out what is normalized value of it. So for example, if your health was say 500 out of a thousand, this would output 0.5. So that will give us this normalized range, which we can now use for our progress bar. Break that down. Do set percent into our update. Okay. So next, we need to just do add this to our UI. So in our player in-game HUD, we're going to look for health bar. And put that in the cast panel. And this chap here, I'm going to put into the top side of the screen here. Control left and control shift. We click on this. I set across like this. Also, I don't want it to cover the whole entire screen, so I'm going to do offset left and offset right. Let's say to 300, maybe 400, and do 400 on the right as well. And we we'll give it a bit of positioning on the Y here. Say 100. Bring it down a little bit. Okay, so now we've got a nice centered health bar. Save, go back to the game. Okay, so as I shoot them, you see the health bar on the other character go down. And if I go on this screen here, you see the health bar of that character go down. And there we go, damage. And that brings us to the end of chapter one in our fire team series. We've now got a basic character working for us in multiplayer and now we're ready to move on to chapter two. In chapter two, we're going to be working on our UI for getting our characters actually into the game and playing with each other. We're going through the lobby system and creating all the menus for that. You can watch our episodes and chapters right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley when you catch all of my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Make sure you've downloaded Fireteam and give it a play and I'll see you all next time. Hey, bro. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop this time like the last time. You better get